My wife and I have been together for eight years, married for five, and we have two daughters. It doesn't really matter, but given the situation of things, Kimmy, young child, is biologically mine, while Tori, tween, is not. The two often spend Friday to Sunday at their grandparents' house. I've noticed Tori for a few weeks has been quiet upon picking them up. She wouldn't tell me what was wrong, though. This afternoon, she was emotional when she got in my truck. I could tell she had been crying. We were headed to Walmart before going home, and I wouldn't force her into the store upset. Finally, after some prying, she told me her grandmother was rude to her. She explained how she forbids any treats, making comments about her body. She's only allowed vegetables and chicken, but she gives Kimmy whatever she wants while saying to Tori, when you lose weight, you can enjoy these things in moderation. This morning, the grandparents brought in donuts. Tori snuck one and went to their room. Grandmother walked in to find her shoving it behind the bed after taking a bite. She flipped her lid on her for sneaking food and making a mess. I was so livid that I left the kids in the truck, called her from the parking lot, and ripped into her. I admit that I was angry and aggressive with my tone and words. Grandmother's only response was that she had to take matters into her own hands because I, as the stepfather, do not care about her granddaughter's health. My daughter seemed relieved as she got it off her chest, and I told her to ignore her grandmother because that was very inappropriate behavior. We went into the store, got our groceries, and I felt bad so I bought each daughter a gift, just because, and to take Tori's mind off things. When we got home, my wife was very upset about how I spoke to my mother. I told her what she had done. She saw the girl's toys I bought. My wife says, you know, regardless of how you feel about what my mom did, I can't believe you rewarded bad behavior because she, Tori, did disobey my mom's rules about only eating healthy foods while at her house. Um, what? What she did was traumatizing to our child. I told my wife no more unsupervised overnight stays at their house. My wife says that was unreasonable and I needed to apologize to my mother for my explosive behavior over the phone. I'm man enough to apologize for my tone, but not the plan of action to protect my child. Not the idiot. Your wife needs to realize children are the priority. That little girl is lucky to have you. Her mother and grandmother will only succeed in giving that child body issues and an eating disorder if they keep this up. OP, you need to tell grandma that she can see the grandkids, supervised, and in moderation when she learns how to behave. You are a great stepdad. This is none of her grandmother's business. It's not her place to take matters into her own hands. She does not deserve an apology. You deserve an apology as well as Tori. Absolutely agree. OP, did grandmother treat your wife this way? From your story, neither of them understands the damage that is being inflicted. Stand your ground on no unsupervised visits. If either of them keeps complaining, find some required reading to educate them. I bet your wife was raised the same way, and as long as she kept her weight in check, she gets to enjoy treats. If she was lucky to be able to have a good weight, by grandma's standards, and always got to enjoy treats, she might see it as normal. If she maintained weight because of this rule, the wife might see this as the reason she has a nice body. It's important to note that I'm 34 female, a lesbian, who isn't entirely out yet, but I'm not entirely in the closet either. I'm out when I'm with my close circle of friends. No, I don't live in a conservative area. It's just a personal thing, and I have my reasons for keeping it this way. So I work with a guy, 31. We've worked together for roughly six months. We aren't close, but I'd say we're work buddies. We don't follow each other on any socials, but we do chat here and there at work about insignificant stuff. Our political views align, so that's usually what we talk about when we do talk. Last week, we walked out of the building together at the end of our shift, and he asked me if I was single. We'd never really asked each other anything personal before, so I was taken aback. I've had plenty of men in my life hit on me, and usually it's no big deal to let them know I'm not interested. But I've been single for almost a year now, and I'll admit my relationship status is kind of a sensitive thing at the moment. I told him something along the lines of, sorry but not interested. He stopped me and said he wasn't asking for himself. I was just trying to get to my car and leave work, and I felt really annoyed. I told him I wasn't going to hook up with his friend, and I'd appreciate it if he just left me alone. 
He stepped back and asked me, what's your problem? I told him if his friend was anything like him, then I really have zero interest. As I walked away, he said, no wonder you're single. When I told all this to my roommate and bestie, they told me my reaction was extreme and that I was the idiot in this scenario. I felt he was out of line and doubled down. The following day, I told our manager what happened and that the whole event made me uncomfortable. The manager had a coach and counsel talk with my coworker. That was yesterday. The coworker has been radio silent with me ever since. I expected he'd apologize, but nothing. The manager and I are friends outside of work. She knows I'm gay. When I asked her how the talk went, she told me I should have heard him out. I was confused and asked what she meant. Turns out he wanted to set me up with his sister. How did he know I was gay? He told our manager it was the Xena Warrior Princess screensaver on my desktop and his gaydar from growing up with two lesbian sisters. Now I feel bad because I missed out on possibly meeting someone, but I was beginning to think I was indeed the idiot and he just caught me at a bad time. I've always had issues interacting with men. So the next day I planned on apologizing, but he put in a shift change request and got moved to the second shift. I have his phone number, but I've been blocked. So was I the idiot here? You are the idiot. This wasn't just some random man asking if you're single. This was your coworker that you knew and trusted well enough to talk politics at work. Even if he was asking you out, I see nothing in your story that indicates he was being respectful or out of line whatsoever. You are clearly extremely sensitive about your orientation and dating life. You took this private pain out on someone who had been nothing but a friend to you. This is an idiot move enough on its own, but the fact that you doubled down and got a manager involved? Triple idiot supreme. No wonder you're single indeed. Not only does she not feel sorry, but she's also still expecting an apology. OP was so offended she went to HR. Of course this dude is going radio silent. I bet he won't talk with her again in a non-work related way. OP, you just lit that relationship on fire just because you assumed someone. Shame on you. My grandmother, GM, was kicked out of my aunt's house when she caused so many marital problems, my uncle threatened to divorce my aunt if she didn't. She lived for a few years in a nursing home before the global issue, but during that time, there were tons of nursing home deaths, so my aunt and mom got her out. I'm the oldest of my mother's children, so I got so much pressure to care for my grandma. I didn't mind too much initially, because the deal was I didn't pay rent and lived with her to cook, clean, and help her with her diabetes. I don't know my GM well, so I thought it might be a good bonding experience, and I worked remotely, so it wouldn't be so bad. The first problem came when I told them I was bringing my dog. My GM freaked out, telling me she would never let a filthy animal in our house. It was the one deal breaker I had, and I told my aunt or mom, Oliver, my dog, had to come with me, but they never told my GM for fear of her reaction. I put my foot down, said if he isn't coming, I'm not either, and I guess my GM gave up because she didn't want to go back to the nursing home, but she made Oliver's life a living nightmare. She would scream at him every time she was around him, and I tried to keep them separate, but she would demand I abandon him because she's my GM. So finally, I had no choice but to leave him with my friend temporarily because she was so unbearable. Next was washing clothing. She demanded that I wash all her clothing by hand and she had a washing machine, but she would scream, you're lazy, if she caught me using it. She also wanted restaurant quality meals and to throw sandwiches and cereal on the ground if she didn't like them. Finally, she didn't believe I worked because I work online, I'm an accountant and she would yell at me during the middle of a meeting for ignoring her when I told her I needed 30 minutes of peace to attend a meeting. My boss told me many times to get her to stop doing that, but she never listened. She has diabetes that isn't managed well, and I tried to get her on a healthy diet, but she screams and yells at me when she doesn't get what food she wants, which causes huge sugar fluctuations and causes her ulcers on her feet to get worse and weep. It was hard to get appointments with the doctor, so I had to clean them, and I was not qualified. When I persisted through the yelling and screaming to make her eat healthily, her ulcers would get much better and start healing. But in the end, I gave up and let her eat anything she wanted, so she would shut up. But it made her blood sugars worse and her ulcers worse, which I had to deal with. 
So after almost two years of a living nightmare, I got out and moved back to my original city. My GM is so mad because she expected I would stay there, looking after her until she passes. I told my mom and aunt I wasn't doing that, and they begged me and tried to guilt me with the fact that she was going to die alone in a nursing home. I feel like a terrible person because I didn't feel any guilt. After dealing with her for two years, I just didn't care. Not the idiot. You gave her two years of your life. I hope you got Oliver back with you. But as a nursing home employee, I dread whoever has to deal with her. My own family had to put my great grandma in a home because she was very similar to this. She wasn't much nicer at home, but we visited her. And with staff able to rotate to deal with her, no one had to suffer long. Caretaking is demanding work. It drains the body, mind, and spirit. To be brutally honest, she doesn't have to die alone. She has your mom and your aunt. They can take care of her, but they will not because they know very well that she's abusive. It's perfectly fine that you don't feel guilty about escaping an abuser. I mean, they are the daughters. It's their responsibility first. They saw an opportunity in the form of OP to dump their mother while they pretended to be good human beings. They get to play a good person part while manipulating OP to take responsibility and bear all the abuse and hard work. Sometimes I read these and I'm completely astonished by people's consciousness and guilty feelings in situations like this. I wouldn't have even thought twice. You are a good person, OP. Two years? I wouldn't have lasted three days. I would have thrown the food at her feet like she did you, yelled right back, took my dog and left. LMAO. We need to stop this mentality of accepting toxic behavior because someone is family. At least you put her in a home and didn't just leave her to sort herself. A few weeks ago, my friend Wendy, 29 female, invited me, 25 female, over to her house for lunch. She's a single mom with two very young children. Wendy and I are not super close. We met at an old job and have hung out a few times before. Just casual things like grabbing dinner after work. However, this was the first time she had invited me over to her house. When I arrived, the kids were screaming and racing around. The younger one had slipped on the rug and started crying when I came in. The older one seemed to be taunting her and play whacking her with a doll. Overall, it was a chaotic atmosphere. Wendy told me that she had forgotten the tomato sauce she needed for the pasta recipe she was preparing. She said she would pop down to the store and grab it and would be back in 15 minutes. I hesitated because that would mean I'd be alone with her kids. So I said I could go to the store and get the sauce since she was busy with the kids. She refused and added that she might need to pick up a few more items other than the tomato sauce. So it would be best if she went. I told her I wasn't comfortable being alone with her kids since I had no idea how to take care of children. Plus the kids weren't just quietly watching TV. They were running around the house, tripping over each other and play fighting. I have no children and don't know the first thing about taking care of them. She repeated it would be 15 minutes tops and that I would be fine. I challenged that and said there was no way it would only take 15 minutes. What if there was a long lineup at the cashier? She had to wait for parking, etc. Her statement that she needed more than tomato sauce also implied she might take longer shopping than 15 minutes. She started getting annoyed then and said something along the lines of, why can't you just help out? I was getting panicked about being left alone with the kids. As she started putting on her shoes, I quickly put my shoes back on and ran out the door. She started screaming at me, telling me to come back. I was frazzled and didn't want to hang out with her anymore. So I said, sorry, I have to go, and got in my car and drove away. Afterward, I texted her to apologize for leaving, but I wasn't comfortable watching her kids alone if they got hurt. She has not responded since then, and it's been three weeks. Am I the idiot for overreacting and refusing to watch your kids alone for 15 minutes, subsequently leaving the hangout instead? Not the idiot. I am so sorry, but I'm cackling at the idea of you racing to get your shoes on and get out the door before her and a slew of loud kids in the background yelling as you peel off down the street. LOL. Sounds like she invited you over to babysit. LMFAO also. Hilarious. I picture them both getting stuck in the doorway, trying to escape the feral children. Note to self, 
Wear slip-on shoes when visiting friends with kids in the future. I have too many button buckle shoes that take five minutes just to get on. She's pulled this on enough friends and family that they weren't going to fall for it anymore. So she's now working her way through acquaintances like OP. She was using a bait and switch technique. Guaranteed she would have run all kinds of errands and been gone all day. This. My sister-in-law asked me to look after her baby for a couple of hours because she had to go buy some new shoes. I agreed. A couple of hours later, I text her to hear where she is. She's at lunch with friends. Seven hours later, she's having dinner with friends. I get my husband to call her and demand she comes back right away since the baby's constantly crying now and it's nearly his bedtime. She picks him up and acts like nothing's happened. Your friend would have done the same to you. She wanted to be child-free. She didn't want tomato sauce. Call me petty, but I would have stayed and seen where this went, then called the police and claimed abandonment when that 15 minutes inevitably turned into an hour plus because, yeah, there is no way this woman wasn't fishing for a personal day. And this way, she'd learn not to pull this crap, lol. I-27 male was born into a bad and messed up bio family. Bio family didn't want kids, but kept having them. They liked to drink and party and were reckless and wild. They had seven kids. I was the second youngest. When I was sick, my best friend's mom essentially welcomed me as one of her kids. And my best friend and his younger brother became my brothers in every way except blood. And she became my mom. I spent hardly any time with my bio family. And when I was with them, I simply watched them do sugar, steal, and argue. My bio family was all in and out of jail. Usually, there was no food. So, my bio siblings went hungry, and I would just wait to leave and go back to my real family. My mom never adopted me, but she's the woman I still think of as mom. She had been a single mom, and it was tough for her, but she never made me feel like I wasn't hers. I lost her when I was 17, and even then, she included me in inheriting from her. And because of her, I was able to survive in the world. I found my place. I had a real family. I'm in a good place now. I live with my girlfriends and I'm close to my brothers. Bio siblings found me recently and all their lives are awful. Three of them have kids that they can't take care of and they wanted my help. I turned them away. I have no desire to be a part of their lives and I don't want them to mess up mine. I don't consider them family any more than my bio parents' family. Bio siblings tried using their kids to talk me around, but it didn't move me. So instead, they said I was an idiot and that I should be helping them out since I had a better start than they did and that I got all the luck while life messed them up repeatedly. I did have more support and help in my life than them, which might make me an idiot. Not the idiot. Blood isn't everything. And you've successfully escaped your bio family and their awful life decisions. Don't let them drag you back in. I would call CPS though. Don't let another generation of kids grow up in the same world you did. My God, OP, you are not an ATM. You're not responsible for how other people's lives turned out. And you certainly owe no one anything. This is why the blocking option is the greatest thing invented. A estranged family does not get to pop up and immediately start demanding help suddenly. You are under no obligation to assist people you barely know. But OP, consider this. Someone stepped into your life and turned it around, and you are in a better place. Could you do the same for one of your nieces or nephews? This is just something I was thinking about because you are proof that it's possible.